so uh, first of all i'd like to thank everyone uh, for joining us today and for khaki lab uh, for hosting us uh, we are going to divide the presentation in two halves the first half is going to be where uh, lakham is going to talk about the savantwadi palace and the lineage and the second half of the presentation i'll take you all through ganjifa and savantwadi lakavas and the future for the savantwadi palace so over to lakham i'm going to share the presentation with you all Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to take you a little bit of the history of uh, my family and our family. So uh, I'm going to start right from where we originated from. So we are actually from the Susodia family from uh, Udaipur. So we came down in around six, uh, early uh, in the 15th century, and then later on uh, we were bought by uh, the Adil Shahis bought us over here. Bijapur Adil Shahis had bought us down to this area. to look after their territory here so it's been a long time since then uh, one of the most the first rulers who came down was mang savant uh, he had just came down around 1627 he came down here uh, then after that there's been a lot more prominent uh, rulers uh, there was king savant the first who actually was person who did a lot of the building works and whatever was that in today's day then later on the same name say uh, keeps going on and how all most royal families do like so there's came savant the third who uh, built the current palace which is there uh, today so i'm just going to go first a little bit about the family crest and what it actually signifies because that will give you a little bit of what happens around here so the sun which uh, tells that we come uh, from the sodia family and then we have the two one is the star and one is the spur which is on the left hand side so this uh those are both for the uh, cavalry that signifies that the right which is the sword which signifies the infantry and then the, on the lower side is the boats so we were actually in those days we were pirates so basically we used to steal from the portuguese so that's something which used to happen in those days uh then the two nags it was known in the, uh, in the past that on the first was blessed by these nags so that's why we have the nag and it's a very prominent thing in our culture over here or and to dear in our family that we still pay pray to the nag and we have a nag temple also in premises so this is a little bit about this and the jay shambho which is written down is to tell about lord shiva because we were worshipers of lord shiva and we continue to till today to uh, worship him so this is a little bit about the structure and this is a picture of the past what it used to look and what it's today so this structure was built by king savant the third so previously the structure was uh, on the top of the hill where i think so it was more to was with the battle and everything but later on we came down from the hill we had to come down because maybe in search of water and the natural resources which were there which is more easy to transport uh, to uh, to this lower lying area so uh, it has a lot of uh, british influence you can see there's like the arches and everything and it's uh, made with all uh, uh, red uh, laterite so everything is naturally got from here and made over here so uh this is the main entrance going in towards uh, the palace so it's called the lester gate uh it's named after a british uh, uh secretary so yeah and he was it was named after him so uh this was the main entrance going in it was built in around 18 uh late 1890s uh, around that period so this is a uh, a small area inside the main structure it's called the packet square so previously all the uh, administrative offices and everything used to be located in in the main premises over here so until even after independence even the local tahsildar offices your treasury treasury is still there till today but uh, the other offices also used to be there so but now we've converted half of it into a museum and we're planning to convert it and see if we can convert the remaining places into like rooms and hotel rooms from there 
So this was a natural water, uh, not natural body. It's a uh, man-made uh, lake which is located in front of the palace. So it's called the Moti Tala. So uh, basically, I told you when they had come down from the hills, this may have been the main reason to have water source. So and this never never dries up. I've never seen it at least in my years, and from what I have known, it's never never dried up. So all the drainage, all the water drain systems have all been connected, and it all comes in here. And if it ever like, if there's always more rainfall, everything there's also a system where it, you can let it out and it goes towards the ocean. So this is the main entrance to the Facet Square, which I was talking about when uh, where the administrative offices were located. So this is a little bit of the gardens, which was there in the past. A lot of changes have happened over the past years and everything, and we have tried to develop it. We try, we have converted even the uh, the Facet Square and few of the locations and made them into uh, wedding spots for which is used now. This is the Darbar Hall. Which is right, uh, which is which was built in 1881. Uh, was built by Raghunath Rao. Uh, uh, that was my great grandfather's father, uh, and it's got a little bit of uh, like the tiling uh, symbolizes, looks like a flower. And we also have uh, the Ganjifa arts, which we'll be talking about later, which is practiced over here, and the painting is done. The ceiling, which unfortunately I don't know, I don't think there's a picture of it. But they are all uh, zinc etched uh, uh, sheets, so the false ceiling. So, uh, there's a lot of uh, like a little bit of wi uh, wildlife and a little bit uh, of uh, that over here, which was shot by my aunt, uh, my great aunts. So I was telling you earlier that uh, most of these places were converted into uh, bedding places right now. So I'm going to tell you a little bit now. This was the mostly about the location, uh, about the building structures and everything. But now I'll tell you a little bit more about the family. Maybe the last three generations, the three earlier generations are before me. So uh, on my uh, on my left is my grandparents and their parents and their sisters and this. So uh, mostly one of them, uh, they were. Three, uh, three sisters and one uh, brother. So out of which one went to Nepal, one went to Kolapur, uh, the sisters, one went to Nepal, one went to Kolapur, and one uh, in uh, Jean, which is in uh, Punjab, uh, Chandigarh, sorry. Uh, so these were the three, and my grandfather was over here. He got married to the- uh, There is a need of gift. There are various other legal implications. So uh, this is one thing. And then on the right is when they have grown up and they are a picture of them a little bit later on. So on the left is my great grandfather, uh, that's Bapu Sahib Maharaj and uh, this Rani Parvati Devi. So their contributions towards this area was mostly towards education. Uh, he, my great grandfather, died at a very young age. So it was Parvati Devi who looked after for at least she was queen regent for almost 14 to 15 years, because my grandfather was young at that uh, stage, and so she, uh, he was around five to six years. So she looked after. So there was a lot of institutes and everything built here for education, uh, even the arts which came down, uh, which had come down also. He was a person and they were the people who like bought it a little bit over here and they patronized it. A lot of chitaris and everything were bought during that time and were in sound worry at that stage. Then later on came um, uh, my grandfather or my grandmother, that's uh, Shatrushila Devi uh, Rani Sahib and uh, Raji Sahib was Shivram Raju. So they also had, they continued what my uh, uh, great grandfathers and my forefathers did. They uh, bought in. He was not a ruler for too long. He was only, I think, so he got coronated in 1947, early 1947. So he was he was 18 years. So he was here only six months before we got independence. So he had to hand over everything, and then was, the whole thing was ended over there. But then he still, after that period, he stood for election. Uh, they had a lot of things to do with uh, arts and crafts, and they were the people who revived what we had lost and they started and so in 1970 
and we'll be talking, Shraddha will be talking more in detail about how they brought about that change. Uh, then on the right is my parents, uh, my, uh, this is my mother and my father. Uh, they, uh, my mom is from uh, the, this from Kolapur and my dad is from here, obviously. So uh, they also had a lot of uh, influence after uh, my you know, grandmother and this, they had a lot of influence towards art and this, and then they also, we did a lot of uh, things towards agriculture and now they look after the college, which was built in those days. And uh, this, that is what is happening, what they're doing currently right now. Uh, these are a little bit of pictures. I know they, it may look a little bit uh, violent, but most of the, actually most of the wildlife, which was, which is around here and which is done over here or whatever was shot mostly by all the female uh, people, uh, uh, family members. So they were basically my grand aunts that is on the left hand side. And uh, on the right hand side is my great grandmother and my grandfather and my uh, uh, grand aunt. So most of the animals and wildlife was shot by them. They were very eminent and they were like, like maybe like tomboyish kind of thing, but they were very strong and had strong people. Uh, there's also a lot of influence of uh, Baroda because we have three generations of uh, Baroda family married into us, the royal family. So the previous generation, so even my grandmother was from the Baroda family. Uh, and so was her mother also, uh, her uh, mother-in-law also was from Baroda. So my grandfather and my grandmother were first cousins as such. And before that also we had one more generation which was married from the Baroda family. So we had a lot of connections with the Baroda royal family and we still to date also we uh, have a lot of connections over there. Uh, this is a picture of me with my uh, uh, grandparents. Uh, uh, I didn't have a lot of time with my grandfather because I was like so five when he passed away. But I hear a lot of things that I have a slight resemblance to uh, with him, uh, with his younger photographs and everything. But yeah, so that's it. And my grandmother, uh, so we had a lot of connection because we, we used to be a lot and I just so, I, don't, I can't say it, but Supposedly I was one of her favorite grandchildren, but <laughs> so we used to always, uh, because even I had a fondness to art and everything. So we always had some connection. We used to go on holidays. She used to take me to wherever she wanted, whenever it used to come to shopping or whenever it came to like few things here and there. So the, I, we had a lot of connection. So when even Shraddha, when we got married and everything. So I knew a lot more about like this connection with art and everything. So for me to, it was a way more easier. So I didn't have to read a book to understand it. Because the amount of times I heard about Kanjifa, the arts and craft, it was all instilled in my mind, just listening to my grandmother over and over and over again. And just the love of it just came from it naturally. Like I would not imagine like when I was in the US for all these years and everything, I would not imagine coming here and work, like coming here and settling down here. But once I came here, I used to the first few months, maybe a little bit, I got like being in a city and coming back here was a little bit uh, here and there. But after some time, I started loving it out here. And now I'm so busy that I don't know, like I can't move out of here. So like going to Bombay is, uh, going to the city is like a, a very difficult task. So this is the current family. So uh, this is um, me, my dad, my grandmother, uh, my sister. Uh, and my mother, and uh, down is a wedding picture of us, which which was two years ago. So we got married two years ago over here. Uh, this is a picture just of this year. Uh, I think so this was Diwali. Yeah, Diwali. So we took a picture. We've got a dog also now. So another family member. So this is a taken in Darbar Hall. Uh, a few more uh, wedding pictures. So a little bit about Shraddha and me. So we both come from culinary background. We actually, it was a love marriage. We both met in, uh, in the US. We actually both studied in the same junior college but never met each other. We met in the US and then we never dated over there. We came back and then uh, we dated and then we met and then after a year we got married. So uh, a little bit is that 
I'm a pastry chef. She's a culinary sh- uh, chef. So it's a little bit of mixture of both, and that's what we'll be talking about later on about what we are planning to do over here. So this is a little bit about the uh, the the palette green. So it is uh, it's the one which we take for the weddings. So how the old picks, how the old was, and how the new is, which we did for the wedding over here. So I'm going to hand it over to Shraddha, who will tell you about the arts and crafts over here in in Soundpuri. Uh, so I'll begin with introducing uh, Ganjifa in India. Uh, Ganjifa was uh, it traces back its origin in Persia, uh, and it was uh, derived from a word Ganjife, which means playing cards. Uh, in India, Ganjifa cards are usually circular in shape, uh, and very less do you find them oval or rectangle, which is more about more the Mughal side. um now back in the day ganjifa was painted on different materials it could be ivory it could be a, a tortoise shell or a wood it uh, then moved on to uh, a stiffened cloth and now today we do it on paper uh, we paint it with uh, tempera watercolors and then we uh, lacquer it three times to preserve it um so uh, first i'm going to take you through the different uh, states that practice ganjifa uh, back in the day uh, it was every state had their own form of ganjifa but today uh, there are prominently only five states that practice it uh, and all of their ganjifa cards look very different from state to state in terms of the colors that they use uh, their expressions that uh, the dashavatar or the idols have so this is uh, odisha ganjifa which is i think one of the most famous uh, and that more popular ones that people know about uh this is the west bengal i have displayed the matsya and kurma avatar of all the ne- next four just so that you can differentiate what it is so this is odisha this is west bengal uh mysore ganjifa and andhra pradesh now coming to savantwadi ganjifa um uh, so ganjifa came into uh, savantwadi in the late 17th early 18th century uh it was got down by the telangana brahmans who came down from andhra pradesh in order to learn dhrumrastra from uh, the kingdom uh when it came into savantwadi uh, we had two different kinds that was a bazar kalam uh, and the darbar kalam now the difference between that is that the darbar kalam has a border which is like the floral border that you see for example in the dashavatar ganjifa uh the bazar kalam does not have that border and you will not find it anywhere else except from if you were to purchase it from uh, the savantwadi palace uh now when ganjifa was adapted first when it came down into india it was the mughal ganjifa which was based on the kingdoms and their courts uh when the hindus adapted it uh we introduced um, it in the form of uh, lord uh, uh, vishnu and uh, the, the reason this was done was so that um when playing the cards they were also chanting god's name and uh, with the thought process that the younger generation when they would play it they would learn a little bit about the history and about uh, you know religion um so this is the dashavatar ganjifa which is one of our most famous uh, ganjifa sets uh, it has 120 cards based on the 10 avatars of lord vishnu uh, similarly we have the dashavatar darchitri ganjifa uh, it's the same as the dashavatar but the only difference is that uh, in this particular set uh, there is a incarnation of lord vishnu in every card uh it takes them about uh, a month my artist about a month to make one set because it there it involves a lot of detailing right from the borders to uh the avatars that are done in the center uh next we have uh the avatars so i wanted to show you what the savantwadi ganjifa dashavatar looks like uh we have 10 avatars like i was telling you matsya kurma varaha and rusenha uh, vamana parshuram rama krishna buddha and kalamki uh the story behind this is that um lord vishnu when he uh he showed himself on earth in 10 different incarnations that's that's what the uh, theory says uh, first he came on to earth in the form of a matsya then moved on to kurma this was every time the world was about to come to an end he would resurface and save us it said that right now we are in the buddha phase and we are moving on to kalamki after which uh the world comes to an end and then humans uh reinstore after a few years uh next we have so in uh, savantwadi we have about 
15 uh, different kinds of ganjifa that were reinvented by our grandparents. One of them is the bird ganjifa. You don't find this anywhere else. So this was based because uh, our grandmother, she was, she was a brilliant artist and her art forms were usually very, uh, very much based on wildlife. Uh, so this is what they created, which is the bird ganjifa based on the birds of India. Uh, there are different avatars like the parrot, eagle, dove, ducks, uh, that she used to paint from memory. And this is when uh, Aji and Azoba, uh, they created the bird ganjifa. It's played similar to the Dasha avatar. In the same manner, we have the animal ganjifa, which is based on the animals of India. And then the Indian musical instrumental ganjifa. Uh, so this is a very pretty set. And I think it's one of my personal favorites because it talks a lot about it has different colors. It's, uh, you know, it's got a very beautiful touch to it. Um, now let's talk about Savantwadi Lakaware. Uh, this was introduced by uh, or revived in 1971. Uh, this is the Savantwadi Lakaware logo that was created and we've uh, stuck to it ever since. Uh, but before I get into the detailing, I would like to talk about uh, Raja Saheb Lieutenant Colonel Shivaram Savant Bhosle and Rajmata Satvashila Devi Bhosle. Uh, I would like to give them due credit because uh, today the revival of the Ganjifa art and what we do is all because of them. Uh, so the story goes behind where, uh, like I said, that Savant, uh, the lacquerware and Ganjifa came into Savantwadi in the 17th and 18th century. It got, uh, it got patronized in the 20th century under Bapu Sahib and then unfortunately it, it lost track over the few years. Uh, so the story goes back where Azuba was traveling and uh, he happened to go to the London Victoria and Albert Museum where he saw Savantwadi cards. That's when he realized and when he came back to India, he started looking more into it and he found a couple of artists in Savantwadi that still do it. One of them was Pundalik Chittari. Now Aji and Azuba went to him, started learning the art uh, and they started painting it under uh, his guidance. Uh, the reason that they wanted to do, they, they were, like I said, they are a very hands-on couple uh, and they wanted to pass it down generations. So the best way they thought was to learn it themselves. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Aji and Azuba. They made a stunning couple, uh, like you see. Uh, so like I was telling you, they were very hands-on. So this is a photo of um, Rajmata painting the lacquerware and Azuba working on the woodworks. So he was a great craftsman. And uh, over the years, uh, they developed a lot of products. Everything that we have in Savantwadi Lacquerware today is uh, introduced by them. We haven't introduced anything different. Uh, we're sticking to what they did. And uh, this is a photo of uh, Rajmata's artwork. Hers was more based on the wildlife, butterflies. Um, she used to uh, basically uh, paint from memory. And uh, this is one of the other portraits that she's done. This is the artworks of Raja Sahib, Shivram Savan Bhusle. Now, like you see that there, um, his depiction of art was very different. His was more on memory of how he depicted his gods. Uh, so both of them had a very different and distinctive style of painting. Now, taking you to Savantwadi Lacquerware products. Uh, today, we have uh, about 200 products under Savantwadi Lacquerware. Uh, introducing the Indo-French playing cards. This is the cards that uh, Azuba found in the Victoria and Albert Museum. And that's when he realized that, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of history that goes behind. Uh, this is based on uh, the French suits, uh, but we've touched it with uh, our art. Like you see that uh, in the King card or the Queen card, they showed like a Darbar setting with the curtains uh, on the top and the King and the Queen setting. Uh, similarly, we have the double figure playing cards. They're also based on the French suits, but the only difference is that the Jack, Queen and King, uh, you can see it from both the sides. Now comes the oval playing cards. Uh, the oval playing cards is similar to the Indo-French. <coughs> the only difference is that the, uh, the, the suits are based on the uh, weapons of the Hindu deity. So here we have the Poti, Gada, Trishul and Vajra as the suits uh, and the King of that is Bra uh, Lord Brahma, Shankar, Vishnu and Indra. The queen is Saraswati, Lakshmi, Sachi, and Parvati. Uh, so, and the jack is the Hans, Nandi, uh, the Garud, and the white elephant, that's the Eravat. Uh, this was also created by our grandparents, um, which, like I said, you know, it, it took them a lot of thought process behind it, uh, but they did beautifully. This is the Chankanjan. So, 
uh, when Ganjifa came into India, this was the form it came in, the Mughal Ganjifa, which is also known as the Chankanjan. This was based on uh, the kingdom and the courts. Um, next comes introducing the games of Savantwadi Lakhavar. Uh, so a little backstory. Whenever you visit uh, traditional temples and you see usually like, you know, stone scratches on the walls, if it's up or down. Uh, back in the day when I did not, I was ignorant about this art, I actually used to wonder, you know, why would people scratch on the temple walls? But uh, when we started looking further into it, they were actually games. But due, due to the reconstruction of the temple, a lot of the tiles, people who were reconstructing it didn't know the value behind it. So the tiles from the bottom went to the top or they went to the sides. Uh, the games on this particular tabal fall, they were all based on the games that were played back in the day and carved through the temple. So the next time you go to a temple, a traditional temple, look for those and you probably find a star or, you know, one of these designs on it. Uh, our tabal fall has five games, uh, which is the first game is tabal fall, cows and leopards, penta alpha and nine men's morris. Um, so these are also, uh, like I say, they're very challenging in a way. Uh, Nine Men's Morris now they've uh, downloaded an app and they've created an app for it which you can play online. Uh, similarly, we have the Fish Manakala, which has three games. That's the Manakala, the Count Four, and the Alka Cook. Um, next comes uh, our Ashtachama. It's one of the most uh, ancient games that we have today. Um, then we have a chess. Uh, it's basically derived from uh, our culture where you have the Raja Rani, the Bhatji, the tower, uh, and uh, what am I missing out? The pawns are the soldiers and the Goda. Similarly, we have a tic-tac-toe, which is the cross and nuts. And now moving on to uh, the trays that we do. So we do um, uh, a lot of trays based on the different arts. So either it would be a depiction of um, God or it would be flower borders like you see in the photo itself. This is a tea tray. This is one of our recent products, actually. Uh, this is keeping in mind the hotel industry because, uh, you know, with the boutique hotel coming up also, we would like to keep or incorporate our art wherever we can. So this is one way that we plan to uh, put our art in the rooms. Uh, the taper tray, the square tray. Uh, this is the jewelry box. It usually works very popularly when we want to for weddings and dry fruits, if you want to put something in it. Uh, here we go on to the rooster napkin holders. Uh, the round candle stands, which are also the, the candle stands are uh, carved uh, on the late machine in our premises. They're painted also here and then they're lacquered three times. This is the Ganjifa buttons. It's one of my personal favorites again. Uh, the, these we don't make anymore currently. This was all from back in the day. So I think the buttons would be around 55 years old. They've stayed perfectly and it's, we, we are uh, selling them right now in our gift shop as well. Moving on to the Savantwari lacquerware furniture. Uh, so apart from um, the paintings, Azoba also used to do the furniture. He was very hands-on and he used to work the late machine himself. So he used to be on it from, you know, morning 9 to evening 5.30 when the day ends in Savantwari. These are some of the photos of the furniture that he's created. Um, this is the table. This is one of the tables that we have, which is... Um, I think one of the most popular ones that we have today. Uh, these furniture pieces were made and sold uh, to the Macy's Fifth, uh, Saks Fifth Avenue in New York. So he was one of the first that started um, exporting this furniture. And I think Laka wants to tell you something about this. So most of the furniture pieces, whatever he used to make, uh, they used to be, he used to make miniatures of them. So this is a small miniature and then someone used to order it from these uh, furniture pieces. So even when Shraddha was telling you that uh, he had some uh, pieces in uh, Macy's. So they had a completely one full entire section which had furniture which was uh, looked like bamboo. And we sent a lot of them, like he sent a lot of them because like I never knew he had sent that many but then I was just clearing up one of the offices and then I found so many orders which had gone there. And he also made a lot of orders going to Germany. He made like those nutcrackers. So there was a lot of uh, things which were exported. Uh, then there was, what happened is that in between there was a phase where he got into politics and 
they, we had a, I think so a group of I think so around 40, 50 uh, uh, carpenters. And then he gave them subsidies. And, and then what happened is that uh, they acquired their own uh, machinery. So what happened? So all of them left the uh, palace premises and they started their own businesses. Uh, so that diluted the whole uh, thing. And they were good at making the stuff, but they were not good at marketing. So slowly it started deteriorating and then they started, they, there was no manufacture of these furnitures and everything. So now from 25, there's only like three, four carpenters which we have right now. But we are trying to see how we can get these furniture pieces back and we have slowly started doing a lot more of these because I think they're unique and it always helps make, it, make a room stand out and it's, it looks really pretty. So these are also different tables, which uh, we used to do. Uh, we tried and uh, so there were like a lot of emphasis, like we, there was Ganjifa on one side and there was furniture on one side. So furniture was more utility. So people used, we thought that this would be more like people would buy. Ganjifa was, people used to not buy that much because it's not played. It was just for a showpiece on a wall or it was just lying on a table. It was just that much so we had to look at something to keep the ganjifa alive we had to make other products so that it, that could stay alive uh, this was a chandelier so most of these designs which were designed were all sketched down and everything and done by my grandfather so he used to sketch down everything we still have all these drawings which he he's done and all of them to the scale and to like to the life size of what it is currently all of these which were made over here. These are a few more. These are still there and they're still there and some of them are in our hall, some of them which we have introduced in our gift shop also which are there. So these are some of the products which we did in between. So on the right which we have, uh, those are made out of coconut shells. So as you know, on this side of the course, there was a lot of coconut uh, coconut trees and everything. So they are all carved in and made over here. So some of them used to be made as like a cup holder or maybe as used as other items in the puja or something. In the center, we had fans. So there was a phase in between where uh, people started collecting fans and now it's coming back where people like to put it up as walls and everything. So we had lost this in between and now we started doing it again. Uh, we used to do a lot of paper mache at one point of time, which is on the left hand side, which we have currently stopped because we wanted to focus more on the traditional artwork and not on doing modern things, more on keeping the old and old products, which should be there. Uh, so uh, Shraddha will take you over with some of the artisans who work with us. So introducing Mohan Kulkarni, he's uh, one of our oldest uh, employees today. Uh, when in 1971, when Ajay and Azoba started reviving the art, uh, they moved based from Belgaum to Savantwadi and they got these two artists with them, one of them being Mohan Kulkarni. Um, he's been with us since the beginning and extremely loyal. Uh, so I would like to give him a lot of credit. He's uh, also got his son working with us now and his daughter-in-law who works with us at Savanswadi Lakhavai. Uh, this is Bar Baru Thakur. Him and his father also, his father was one of the first few who joined along with Kulkarni and that's him. Uh, a very uber talented artist and the uh, photo that you see next to him, uh, it's a five feet uh, painting of the Dash Avtar, uh, Matsya Avtar. Uh, th that has been put up in our first room, uh, which I will talk about later. Uh, but extremely talented. He was with us in uh, back in the day and then he stopped working with us for a few years and rejoined. Uh, like you see in uh, my further story down there, like a lot of our artists, um, they started working with us, but then they left because we couldn't pay them enough. Now, the art, uh, the art is something where like, you know, it, it has a lot of value, but when it um, comes to uh, the recognition, not a lot of people knew of Savantwadi Ganjipa, uh, but slowly, slowly with the, uh, uh, in today's time, we've started paying them better and all of them have come back to us because uh, it's, it's uh, an art that even I personally feel they hold a lot of pride in. Uh, this is one of the other portraits that uh, Baru has done for us of the Vaman Avtar. 
this is sangeeta kumbhar um, so she also was with us uh, in joined us in 2013 and she's been with us ever since uh, her and her sister both come to us and uh, extremely hard working will never um, say no to anything always willing to try something better uh, this is sachin kulkarni like i was telling you uh, son of uh, mohan kulkarni he was with us from 1994 to 97 uh to then he stopped for a while joined us again in 2001 again he stopped for a while and now back he's back with us in 2019 and i think he'll be with us for a long time now that's his wife gayatri kulkarni who uh joined us in 2019 uh and she's been with us uh, ever since uh extremely um I, i don't know how to say it but like she one of the most quaint artists that we have uh very very hard working uh will do her work and the reason i want to talk to you all about uh all these artists and i want to give them due credit is because today we are what we are because of them uh they've been with us since a lot of years and i think they deserve the credit uh this is pradnya panchal she was with us in 2008 uh, she was with us till 2012 and then now she rejoined us in 2019 she had moved base for a few years and now she's back with us and uh i'd like to say that i'm extremely happy to have her back because uh her attention to detail is something that i haven't seen in a lot of artists and uh, i hope to like bring her to the forefront uh, in the best way possible that's varsha londe she's joined us in 1998 uh, one of our older artists and uh, she's been with us throughout uh she's also uh apart from the art i would like to say that she helped us a lot with our patikar so the patikar is our temple in the premises which has a very very strong influence uh, and presence in our property and any time it's uh, anything to do with like you know our puja she's the one who helps us with like the festivity she help cook with us uh, so uh, almost a part of the family i would like to say that's atmaram narvekar so he was with us from 1972 to 1982 uh you see the photo on the right where uh, he actually won certificates and he was one of our most talented artists uh, back in the day uh he left us in 1982 to move to bombay uh, because he started working with uh, another textile industry and then unfortunately uh, had to return back i guess but to our benefit uh, to savantwadi because of the pandemic uh, he lost his job and then he came to us and basically now he's working with us again uh the photo on the left is him today and unfortunately he hurt himself in an accident but now he's working himself back into painting the art that he used to these are a few photos of uh, savantwadi lakavas from back in the day like you see that's uh, rajmata satvashila devi with the artist um and this is this was the workshop back then for the woodwork workshop was in taisa bada which now we are converting into the boutique hotel Uh, the photo down right where you see savantwadi woodworks that's where uh, hopefully in the future our restaurant will be this is savantwadi woodworks uh, this is uh, gavas gavas has been with us also for a long time and he's the one who works the late machine uh, i would like to pause and run you through two of the videos of our artists doing mohan kulkarni doing the caricature and uh, gavas working the late machine
so that was a, a glimpse of what happens back here. Um, taking you to the annual photos of Savantwadi lacquerwares and woodworks, uh, it, it, it used to be a beautiful tradition where once a year everyone used to come in the best clothes and you know take a photo uh, and show their year's worth of work. Uh, we've unfortunately stopped doing that uh, but now we plan to start doing it. So we were going to start this Diwali, but because of the pandemic, a lot of our artists are not coming. Uh, so we want to start doing that from the coming year. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Savantwadi Lakavas today as to what we are further doing uh, so as to promote the art. Uh, we've been, uh, I, the entire family, uh, including dad, mom, Lakam and I, We've been trying to conduct as many workshops as possible so that you know we can uh, educate the younger generation today about the art. Uh, what we've, uh, I think, withdrawn from these workshops is that uh, when, when they come, the students come, they see what goes behind making the art. They see that somebody is working behind it uh, on a ta art table from 9 to 5.30 doing the same designs repeatedly on 120 cards. The kind of work that goes behind it when they do one border on one card that's when they start appreciating the art so much more uh, so that's what we want to get out of this is to kind of spread whatever knowledge we have we've spoken to uh, in fact uh, the mit college in pune has come down the sophia college from bombay has come down uh, they've done workshops with us and we plan to keep doing that so that whatever we can to educate people about uh, this art form uh, we are doing today that's one of the interactive sessions that we hold uh, after the workshop is over. <clears throat> That's usually because, you know, when, when they practice the art, they have so many more questions as to, you know, what goes behind it, how it was done, uh, the practices that we had in the past as to how it was changed today. Uh, we also have the Deccan Odyssey that comes down uh, about nine months in a year. So uh, Deccan Odyssey is the train that uh, basically has a lot of... Um, tourists, usually uh, international tourists that travel through certain parts of India. Um, so we welcome them at the train station uh, with our wearing a Navari saris, doing a tilak. Uh, on the right uh, down, we have the photo of the potter. Uh, we usually take them through the traditional practices of Savantwadi where, you know, back in the day pottery was done uh, turning a wheel. So we try to keep it as um, traditional as possible. That's a photo of the Rangoli that we do at the Fackett Square entrance, usually when the Deccan Odyssey is coming. <clears throat> the, this is the photo of the Darbar Hall. So we host a lunch for them. Uh, the Deccan Odyssey, when they come, it's a full day program. So they come with us, uh, come to us in the morning where we welcome them at the train station. Uh, we take them to Pingoli village, which is a village nearby where we show them a puppet show and their museum. Uh, then we bring them to the palace. We take them around the museum. Uh, and then we host them for lunch. Uh, the lunch is a uh, typical Savantwadi Thali where uh, we give our put, put our best foot forward and try to feed them what you know uh, we would eat on a normal uh, day. Uh, then it moves on to uh, this is a photo of uh, a few of our guests eating at the Darbar Hall. And this is a photo of uh, the ladies who are uh, doing the Fugdi dance. So. Uh, when the Deccan Odyssey comes here, we try to keep it um, as local as possible. We don't hire people from outside. So these are the women of Savantwadi who come and depict a dance form called Fugri. Uh, it's basically the steps are drawn or inspired from their day-to-day -day life as to, you know, what goes behind uh, the women go into the kitchen in the morning, what they do and uh, washing clothes. There are, there are dance steps that depict that as well. Um, and that's another photo of uh, the Deccan Odyssey with us. Uh, usually, like at the end of it, they, they, we like to take a photo with them even for our memory. And a little bit about uh, the future for Savantwari Palace. Uh, like you all know, uh, we are working on building a boutique hotel. Uh, we're starting with six rooms. We're starting small because we want to keep it as personal as possible. Uh, we're basing the rooms on the Dashavtar Ganjifa. So the first six rooms are based on the first six avatars of Lord Vishnu. Uh, even the furniture that we are going to be uh, putting into the rooms is going to be what Azuba made back in the day. So every furniture piece is about 55 to 60 years old. Um, one thing that 
we've been extremely uh, particular and proud about is during the construction of the boutique hotel, we've only hired locals. It's taken us about uh, two years now. Uh, ever since uh, I got married into this family, we started working on, uh, you know, developing the hotel into a boutique, uh, the property into a boutique hotel. And the reason it's taken us this long is, first of all, we're trying to revive it, not construct anything new, but also hire locals. Um, it's a conscious effort from our end. We're not hiring you know, the best professionals and making our life, you know, much simpler. Uh, we're also working on a card museum. Uh, so Rajmata Satvashila Devi, she, um, oh, okay, sorry. A few photos of the room. Uh, that's our room number one, where uh, the furniture that you see, uh, I already spoke to you about. Uh, the wall painting, the Matsya Avtar. Um, this is a glimpse of what our rooms, the room number one looks like. Uh, a little bit about the museum. Uh, so, um, in the past, uh, there used to be a person called as uh, Govardhan Das. He's a very close friend of my, uh, my uh, grandmother. So he had he has he had a largest collection of the Ganjifa cards. Uh, he passed away around five, six, seven years ago, and he had he had said that the cards have to only go to one person, and only one person I'm going to willingly sell it. And it was to my grandmother. So we bought over the whole collection from him. And we want to display this because he knew that it was only my grandmother's visual thing to put up a museum. And he wanted to showcase it so that everybody could see it. So he didn't get the opportunity. So my grandmother didn't get the opportunity. But then we want to do it and we want to make sure we do a museum. And this museum will be one of its kind because uh, there's no card museum as such in India. And especially one which is only towards Ganjifa, which is not only sound for Ganjifa, but it's Ganjifa from all over India. I think so it will be something else and it will be totally different thing. It also would put sound for on the map. So it would get a lot of people coming into sound for and to see all this thing. So this is something that we are working on. We are seeing, uh, we're trying to see if we can get help from the government. Also trying to see whether we could do it by ourselves and see where all where all we can get help from. But I think so it'll be wonderful once it comes up. I'm really, really looking forward to having this uh, museum come up soon. So ending the conversation, this is um, Instagram pages of uh, the Savantwadi Palace and Lack of West. Uh, we try to put up whatever we can, uh, give people uh, Anna well wishes updates on what's happening at the palace. Uh, Lakam and I recently have created uh, a page called Created with Royalty, where we'll be combining our passion for cooking and along with uh, what is going behind the scenes of uh, the hotel. Uh, we're trying to be as real as we can and we're going to be talking about what, uh, the, this, what we do on a regular basis. We also hope to, that's a story for another day, but uh, we hope to like, you know, bring back a lot of the royal recipes, traditional food uh, that we had. So. Uh, so, I won't tell you when you end the conversation or something, what we think about the arts and handicraft, what we, how we would take it forward from here on. Uh, it's been a difficult road, it's been a difficult road even for uh, my grandparents, even for my parents. Uh, and in all these times, it's difficult to get people and teaching someone uh, all uh, this aspect uh, teaching them, training them, doing Gajifa all over again. It's, it takes time and time. So we are trying our best to make sure uh, it, it can be done properly. And we are trying to revive as much. So we are trying to get more artists to start doing this work. We are trying to get more and more people. We are trying to educate more people about it. So like even uh, Khaki Lab helping us at least spread the word around it's a good thing because it's important for everybody at least have the knowledge of it. And later on, because of this, people at least will come and visit Sound Worry. Uh, I know a lot of people go down to Goa. So it's just another hour away from there. So it would be nice to actually come here and see it. Uh, because of this COVID time, it's a good thing that we could actually visually see it. This would be actually a museum tour or it would be a tour of the Sound Worry Palace. But we could do it online. So that's good. So if you people could not come and visit, at least we hopefully we have done it at least in a form of a video, uh, like in a presentation format and we talking to you. 
So I hope uh, we have answered most of the questions and I think so if any questions are there, we are most happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Shaddaji. Thank you, Lakamji. It was really fascinating. I think for me, the highlight was the fact that how all these people are coming back slowly and helping you revive these crafts. So there are lots of questions. There are not a few. So I hope you're prepared for a long haul. Let me start off by looking at the questions. Uh, Okay, so uh, I read somewhere that uh, Gandhiji once visited uh, Sabatwadi and he called it uh, Ram Rajya. Uh, do you have any further information on that? Uh, yes. So actually, the first Saul Satyagraha which happened uh -huh. happened over here. I see. Oh, yes, it happened over here. So, uh, but it was on a much more smaller scale. Okay. So it happened on the Shiroda beach, I guess so you know of Shiroda. So it yeah. happened around there. And then he was, he also had come for a meeting in uh, Belgaum. Uh -huh. uh, so it was the first, uh, one of the Congress meetings was happening over there. And then the British were after him. So he had come to hide towards us. So he stayed with us for over a month in Amboli. Uh -huh. so at our place over there. So okay. he was there for a, at least for a good month over there. And uh, yeah, that was probably it. And probably he, yeah, it was... The one of those things. So you mentioned that, Sa I mean, everyone knows Savangadi and its proximity to Goa. Was there any Portuguese influence in any of the traditional crafts and arts of Savantwadi ever? Uh, not towards the arts and crafts. We were mostly with war with them most <laughs> of the time. So it was a back and forth thing, continuous wars, but uh, not much influence towards art. Was, uh, okay. We had more influence from the British compared to the Portuguese. Okay. It was only the battles and we uh, stealing stuff, stuff from them. <laughs> okay. I think the next question is more for Shraddhaji. Uh, somebody wanted to know, how do you distinguish a Savantwadi Ganjipa from, any, from the other states? Is there any particular artistic style or design or material? Uh, yes. So basically, Savantwadi Ganjipa is unique when it comes to its plural borders. <coughs> when okay. it comes to any of our Ganjipa cards, we usually try to uh, like you see in any of our uh, Ganjipas, uh, we, we have a border that we do, which are which is stapled to Savantwadi. Anywhere else outside of the royal palace, if you go to buy the Ganjipa, you will not find that intricate border that we do. Plus the Ganjipa that is uh, comes from our home, it has different colors and the back of it we paint Sinduri. And on okay. behind a few of the playing cards, we have a flower design, a flower border that we do. Okay. So Ankur, I guess that answers your question. Uh, where can one learn to play Ganjifa is a question. Uh, so we have, uh, there are a few YouTube videos uh, that uh, uh, show how to play Ganjifa. We also, when, when we sell uh, uh, the Ganjifa sets, uh, we give a booklet that gives you the instructions as to how to play it. Uh, but the basic format of how to play Ganjifa is um, 120 cards. They put face down on a table. Uh, it's usually uh, played in numbers of three or pairs of three. Uh, now, how it goes is uh, before sunset. It's a very interesting game and it's not very easy. Uh, I'd like to point that out because uh, basically before sunset, uh, the trump card is Lord Rama and after sunset, the trump card is Lord Krishna. So whatever cards you have in hand is going to change according to time. Plus with the 10 avatars, the first five avatars, uh, the hierarchy goes with King Bazir is to 10 in terms of hierarchy. And the next five avatars, the uh, uh, hierarchy goes from King Wazir 10 to Ace. So the cards change. So you need to know what avatar you have and where it's coming from. Like So in terms of, um, it's challenging, but it's very similar to the game Tindo Pach, if you're familiar with. Do yes. Tindo Pach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's played in a similar manner. And the colors which are used for the cards, uh, are they what? Uh, natural colors. colors were drawn with what was available here so like you see there's a oh. lot of sinduri there's uh, the maroonish red that we have the post the green that we're using those yeah. were the colors that were available back then so back then we used to do it from natural dyes uh, mm -hmm. but we stopped using that because it was very difficult to preserve it because uh, uh, it used to fade after a you know few years uh, so now we moved on to tempera colors uh, and now we lacquer it three times but now that you know the natural colors are coming more, it's becoming more uh, easy. Yeah. To, the availability, we, we want to switch back to it. Uh, so that's in the works. So hopefully soon. 
So two questions from Vijay and Bharat. Where can we buy all these lovely products? Uh, right now, uh, you can buy it. Uh, you either get in touch with us um, on our email, which is Savantawadi Lakhavez, or via Instagram. We're okay. also developing a website. So hopefully, uh, you know, people can buy through the website. We're in talks with a few uh, uh, companies like Kalara, which is a Reliance brand. Um, and there's another uh, girl in uh, Hong Kong who's doing it with us. So we're trying to spread it. Uh, but it's all right now, uh, the best way to buy it from us would be from our Instagram page or via email. Okay. Yes. So we've got somebody who wants to revisit Savantwadi. He says he's been there on several road trips and he wants to spend a couple of days there. How does he get more information about the boutique hotel? And is there a social media presence or a website? Uh, they can, uh, he can uh, please email us on Savantwadi Palace. Uh, at gmail.com. All, all our accounts are on Gmail. So there's Savantwadi Lakhavez, there's Savantwadi Palace, which he can get in touch with us anytime. Uh, okay. We have somebody from uh, amongst us, Mama Lisa Sheikh, who says his grandfather used to work in the Savantwadi Palace. Oh, wow. And he was dealing with pearls and he was uh, from the Patwe community. So he wants to know more about the labors behind that particular art and the process of the the work with the pearls or uh, is that a question uh, okay. I, I think so when you meant by pearls i think so it's just uh, flat <coughs> shells which they used to uh, paint on before what uh, uh the flat shells so it was on those that they used to paint so over the period of time we have switched on out of that and now come to this because it's not readily available okay so would that be something like mother of pearl Yes, the yeah, the yeah, basically mother of pearl, and those are the flat ones, the flat seashells which you find, the white ones. Yes, have the color, so it's something on those bases. That's what I think it is. Yes, I may be wrong also. Uh, a lot of windows in old traditional Portuguese homes used to have that material for for, yes. for, pri for privacy. Yes. Okay, now there are lots and lots of questions for somebody who has another connection with Savatwadi. He, uh, this is Bharat and he says many of the Ranis of Savantwadi were from Baroda which was the arts hub yes. did that influence arts in Savantwadi in any way? Uh, yes it did because whenever uh, someone used to get married they used to get people along with them so okay. there was always a lot of influence I know Baroda has got a lot of influence towards art especially Raja Rao Yorma and everything uh, there was that little bit of influence but I don't think it was that much Okay. What's uh, being that, but I think so always it's there in the blood. So okay. like as my grandmother also painted um, and I saw that even the former uh, uh, princesses also had some kind of art background. Speaking of princesses, that was quite a, a revelation about how, uh, how uh, they were intrepid hunters also, your great aunts. Yes. <laughs> And I find that so fascinating, you know, because uh, yes. uh, even uh, my father-in-law keeps telling me that the women of the house were very powerful uh, and they had a lot of uh, influence through the years. So that's something that I, I proudly stand upon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is, I was thinking about it as Lakhanji was speaking. If I can ask where, where the Yurani <laughs> comes from. <laughs> uh, so uh, Yurani... Uh, uh, comes from uh, this from Gujarat, from a okay. place called Veraval. Okay. Uh, but she's uh, her family's lived in uh, Bombay. Okay. And yeah, so that's the little bit of background from where she was. Yes. And uh, staying with the arts of Savantwadi, Bharat says that uh, there's a lot of mention of gold and silver in Savantwadi jewelry in the 18th and 19th century. Uh, any plans to revive it? Uh, not as of now, at least, like, I'm, at least in the past few years, there's not been that much connection towards the gold and uh, jewelry out here. Uh, it's been a bit uh, low here, but nothing much around here towards that. And also staying with Bharat, his question is, Kavi art, which is more prevalent in Goa, Karwar, is also present in Savantwadi temples, according to him. Yes. Are there any plans to revive that too? Uh, yes, so uh, one of the things also when it comes to like even khaki toes and you, you all have toes. So even when we were doing the place, whenever we were doing the hotel, 
there are a lot of temples. There, there are a, a numerous amount of temples around here and they're really beautiful. So I think it would be really good to get people to come here and just do like few tours, just going to around all these temples because uh, we also have a lot of stone carvings and everything in the palace premises, which a lot of all these old temples discarded because they oh. want to put new, they want to put new things which are like colorful and everything. But at least my grandfather was at least good enough to at least say like, okay, we'll keep it. You can uh, do this. So we have a lot of uh, sculptures also from like uh, 12th and 13th century. Wow. Which is that old. And we still have them. So we want to use them also in the premises here. And there are a lot of old temples around these areas. So I think it would be a good thing to get people to see that. And people are interested in seeing all these old structures. Oh, yes. Yeah, and seeing all these old things. And it's interesting, like, even the gravestones which are there around these places, it tells you a whole story. I think so you also might be knowing about it. It tells you, like, it tells you how many wives he had. It tells you whether he was a warrior, whether he was, uh, whether he was in the infantry, whether he was in the cavalry. It tells you all these things. And it's interesting to learn about all these things. Even I like went to these temples. Actually, the first time I learned about this was during my uh, wedding. We went to one of these temples and then this person started telling us about it. And then really made me curious. And then I'd seen so many of these stones lying at home. And I didn't know much about it. And it made me learn more about it. Okay. So Bharat has just added two more crafts to your list of uh, things to cover. According to him, puppetry was very popular in Savantwadi at one time normal puppets as well as shadow puppets. So maybe that could be another uh, project for Savantwadi lack of airs to take up. And... We actually do have a lot of, uh, we have some uh, puppet pieces in the premises. Okay. But usually what happens is that when we stop by Pinguli, uh, like I was telling you, uh, uh, when Deccan Odyssey comes over, Pinguli is a village that is near us and mm -hmm. they master in the uh, puppetry and they have a museum dedicated to it. So when it comes to things like this, we want to be able to still give them the sort of income, that steady income that we've been getting. And uh, we've often spoken about it that, you know, when the uh, Palace Hotel establishes, we want to give them a small space here where they can come and display and sell their puppets. Uh, even through the years, even when we used to do paper mache products, uh, because uh, people of Savantwadi uh, used to do it and they used to sell it, we stopped making it in the palace because that's okay. something that we wouldn't want to take from their right. income. That's, mm. We've always been very specific about that, that we never want to clash interest. Uh, so even though we do have uh, puppets from back in the day, we don't plan to revive them ourselves, rather give somebody else their opportunity. That's very nice. So that's uh, how difficult is it to get the younger generation interested? Um, I think so, you know, from uh, the, I think recently, uh, a lot of students when they came from MIT Pune, uh, we had some uh, that came down from the Sophia College. They, we had JJ School of Arts come over. So I would say maybe out of 60 students that came by, I would I saw about 10 of them interested and the rest 50 halfway through the workshop were on their mobile phones. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like they are not interested, but a lot of them, uh, it's, you know, it's a lot of work, right? So to get them into this uh, particular form of art and uh, to see that uh, it's a slow process. So, you know, with the younger generation, everything wants to be like, everyone wants to go apart and like move you know up the ladder really quick so I think uh, the situation's a lot better where like you people are more conscious of what goes behind it but it's still not where it should be in, at its optimum best uh, but you know like I was telling you about Sangeeta her sister who's in college now she comes and does the art with us a lot of people uh, who came and visited our workshops they were asking for internship so to see that is very beautiful and, you know, we're always open to it that, you know, when you want to come learn, please do come stay with us for a month, two months, find your space. So, yeah, pretty uh, much. Two last questions. One was from Gauri. He said, uh, does, did the furniture include cots? Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, Mahesh's question, did the artifacts include wooden fruits? Uh, so we used to do wooden fruits in house, uh, but now the wooden toys and wooden fruits is mostly what the bazaar does. 
and we don't try to do that so we have only stuck towards doing only uh, like furniture and the ganjifa and only those things because we don't want to get again mixed with them and it's just repetitive work and then someone is buying here and there it doesn't make that much mm-hmm. sense so we rather specialize in one thing and exactly. keep the remaining for them that's but we uh, that's do, we do like, have a um, i think a good amount of quantity of the wooden fruits that we used to do so uh, we plan to you know showcase it in the museum when it comes up great that's it for the evening thank you so much for sharing your personal journeys thank you for sharing your heritage it was really fascinating for to see somebody take such an active interest and uh, i i uh, 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 by that i meant your grandfather and then you two are carrying on the tradition so thank you very much thank you thank you very much thank you